Hello everyone, welcome to my, the first part of my Angular Crash Course. Angular is a front-end framework that is used to create many web applications. It was made over by the folks at Google and is used in companies like Microsoft. By the end of this video, you will be able to learn how to install Angular, as well as learn stuff like basic routing, components, file structures, as well as utilize Bootstrap, which is a CSS framework. In order to install Angular, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have Node.js installed. If you're watching this video, I strongly suggest that you understand how Node.js works as well as basic JavaScript. I also suggest that you know TypeScript, although that's not as necessary. So in order to install Node, in case if you don't have it installed, if you're using macOS, use brew install node. If you're using Windows, what you're going to want to do is go to their Node.js website and install it from there. Once you have Node installed, you should have npm installed with it. To check to see if that's installed, type in npm in your terminal, and you should see no error messages. Now that that's done, the next thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and install Angular via npm. So when we install Angular, we actually install the cl client tool. Now the client tool allows us to interact with the terminal and create Angular apps as well as add packages to Angular apps. So to do this, write npm install dash g at angular slash cli. Doing this, we'll get it ready. I'm going to cancel that command, but that should get your uh, cli get your uh, client for Angular set up. To check to see if it is correct, type in ng. When you type in ng, as you can see, you see no error messages. Now, let's go ahead and create our very first app. In order to create our first app, type ng new, and then type in your app name. I'm going to go ahead and call mine Angular Tuts, and make sure there's no spaces, and click Enter. Now, for this tutorial, we're going to need some routing, so we're going to type Y for that. Now, inside of here, we're not going to do too much of CSS or SCSS. That's where we're going to learn about some bootstrap. So for now, just type in CSS. All right, now it's going to go ahead and create an entire file structure for you, as you can see over here. And once this is done, I'm going to go ahead and teach you guys how to um, open up this app. All right, so fast forward 30 seconds. It's now been fully installed. So to do this, go ahead and just CD into your file. After doing this, what you're going to want to do is type in ng serve. What this does is it tells the Angular file or the Angular project to serve itself onto your local host. Now, once this is done, it's going to go ahead and give an address. All right, so as you can see here, we have a browser link. So if we just go ahead and click on that, it should open up your browser. Now, as you can see over here, the app is running completely and perfectly fine. So before we continue on, let's go ahead and understand what it is inside of this project and how to understand the basic file structure. So the first thing, if I were to just zoom in, there we go. So the first thing we're going to want to see is that we have these config files, typescript.app.json, and these config files. You don't need to touch these, and this is simply just your dependencies. And the main purpose for this is that the computer or NPM manager can check to see these dependencies and download them. All right. Now, inside of here, the main bulk of the stuff that we're going to be editing is inside of source. Inside of source, we're going to click on app. And now inside of app, we have three main files that we need to look at, or actually four. The first one is app.module.typescript. Now, any modules that we're going to be using, they're all going to be interacting inside of here. If they're not initialized here, it's going to create a problem later on. Consider this your initial file. Now, all that stuff that you saw earlier with the link is all inside of this HTML file. And the CSS is all backed up here. Although there is no CSS here, but if there was, it would be placed inside of here. And then in app.component.typescript, that's where stuff like the title is there. Over here is basically where you would load in data or serve that file or have certain routes inside of there. So let's try and make some changes to our app.component.html. Let's just delete everything inside of here. And now let's actually just leave the router outlet because we will need that later on. 
So just aside from the last line, just delete everything, right? Now inside of here, let's just write a basic h1 tag that says this is an Angular app. Okay, now let's go back into our terminal. Uh, all right, now let's just serve that once more. Uh, you don't actually need to serve it because it automatically will refresh it for you each and every single second. However, I just refreshed it because I forgot about that. So let's go back and see the uh, link to the browser. And as you can see over here, we have this is an Angular app. Similarly, what we can do, similarly, over here, the app.component.html is not meant to be a file where you insert HTML code. Instead, what you do is you make components and direct it to that specific component. This way, your app is a lot more organized and is able to, to connect with each other a lot more successfully. Right now, we're going to go ahead and learn how to make different components within Angular. So generating a new component is actually not that difficult. The first thing we're going to want to do is go into our terminal and type in ng generate c. Now c stands for component and then you would write your component name. Let's go ahead and make a home page. Home page. All right. Once we click that in, you're going to see that we created four files as well as updated one file. So let me actually show you guys that directory. So the file that's been updated, or actually let's look at the ones that have been created. As you can see over here, there's a directory called homepage. Inside of homepage, we have four files. We have a CSS file, an HTML file, a .spec.typescript file. That's just a test file. You don't need to worry about that. As well as a regular TypeScript file. That is a component. Now, similar to what we talked about earlier, each and every single component will follow this structure. Let's look at what we have inside of our homepage. Inside of our homepage, it says homepage works. Now. Let's try and make a route to this so that it can link via our basic app. So to make routes, head on over to your app.module.typescript. Now, what you're going to see that's very interesting inside of here is that your import files will have a new homepage component, and that's automatically added to your declaration. Now, if it's not added, which is very rare and I would doubt that would happen, go ahead and add that in. Because, now, because if you don't add that in, it'll simply be dead code that cannot be accessed. All right, now let's go ahead and actually add in another. So we already have the app routing module that we already did at the beginning of the video. So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and actually add just one more module. So we're just gonna go import uh, router module, the router module, all right, which is just from uh, Angular router. And inside of here, we're going to go router module, router module dot for root. And inside of dot for root, we're going to create a list. Inside of this list, we're going to have dictionaries or objects uh, in TypeScript. And we're going to first of all have a path. Let's call this path the home path. All right. And what it's going to do is it's going to, con it's going to connect directly into our home page component. So we're going to go component, home page component. All right. Now, if I were to go ahead and just serve this application, uh, kill terminal, kill terminal. Okay. Now let's just go ng surf. All right. Now let's go ahead and open this up. Uh, so as you can see over here, so the initial page just says this is an Angular app, but if I go slash home, we're gonna see that it says home page works. Now you might be wondering why is it that we see two pages at once? And the reason for this is because the app.module.html or app.component, no, no, wait, what is it? Let's check. So the reason for this is because if you look at app.component.html, whatever is on this page will be automatically served. So that's why you cannot have anything on here. All you can have is have router outlet, which allows you to redirect from this page to another page. So now let's go ahead and look at what happens. 
If I were to go to slash home, we see that home page works. But if you go to the initial page, nothing is there. It's completely blank. Now, if you don't want there to be anything on the index page or when there's nothing there, you can just you know continue on coding your app. But every web application always has an initial page to start off with, and then you would have redirections to other pages. In order to fix this, you're going to go to app.module.typescript and you're going to create another object. No, I don't. Comma. And you're going to want to go ahead and make another object inside of here and make it with two curly braces. And you're going to want to go path. Okay. And you're going to leave that value empty. And then you're going to go comma redirects to uh, slash home. Okay, and then you would want to match it to full. Okay, so let me just go ahead and explain what this code does. So first it checks to see if the path's value is empty. If it's empty, redirect directly to home and match the path fully so that as if it was slash home, it would be the same. Now let's go ahead and see what happens when I try to go and have an empty path inside of my website. All right, let's zoom this in. Now let's just suppose if I go slash home. As you can see, it automatically redirects to home. And this isn't being done by myself. This is rather just being done by Angular. So see how much easier Angular makes our lives. Now, similarly, our website, it kind of looks a little bit dull. Let's go ahead and add some basic bootstrap to make it look better. Learning how to use bootstrap not only makes your website a lot cleaner, it'll also help you understand how to add newer libraries into your Angular application. As the way Angular works is that it has a lot of different batteries that you can include inside of your framework. However, you have the option to. Bootstrap is just one of them. So let's go ahead and install Bootstrap. To do this, type in npm install Bootstrap. Now, when this happens, it goes into npm and finds the Bootstrap package on a website. It's the npm website. And then it downloads it. Now over here, as you can see, I have 39 vulnerabilities. Now these aren't really anything that may not happen on your machine. These are just things that I have to fix. But regardless, it still downloads. And it says over here up to date because it's already pre-downloaded. Now the next thing you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and add this into your personal application. In order to add this in, what you need to do is specify it into the Angular compiler that you're using Bootstrap. Now, currently, Bootstrap is downloaded inside of your node modules. Now, what's a node module, you ask? A node module is in really any JavaScript uh, directory or of any project. And the node modules have the basic directories or the basic dependencies to build your app. Now, what we're going to do is go ahead and link that in. So head on over to angular.json and go over to where it says styles. Now, this is currently on line 29 and it should be there if you haven't touched it. Over here, open up the array and go ahead and specify the path. In order, the path that we will be specifying is to the node module. So we're gonna go dot slash, which goes up one directory, node modules, slash bootstrap, slash dist, slash CSS, slash bootstrap, dot CSS, and separate that with a comma. Now when Angular looks at the JSON file, it's gonna see that the global styles, global styles means for everything, will be inside of this file called bootstrap.css. Now let's go ahead and just run that. ng serve. Error. Oh, okay, it appears that I just simply misspelled the uh, dependencies. Let me just go ahead and just copy and paste it from the uh, their website. All right, there we go. And let's just separate that with a comma. Now let's just go ahead and serve that in once more. So yeah, this is the proper um, path. I just misspelled it. Okay, so now as you can see, it's our website is live. So let's go ahead and open this and let's view what we have. As you can see, the font has immediately changed and it looks a lot cleaner. Now let's go ahead and see how we can integrate Bootstrap into something else. So let's go ahead and actually add some buttons. So in order to add some buttons, let's just head on over to our homepage.components 
All right, and let's just add a button. Now, currently, if I just go button like this, okay, and if this was just original plain uh, HTML, it would just render a very ugly looking, a very ugly looking one. Now, let's just, you know, put in button here, okay? But inside of button, if I put in the class attribute and type in the following uh, function, I guess, if that's what you're gonna consider it, type in button, button primary, it's gonna automatically get a primary button rendered for you. And the CSS, you don't even have to write CSS. It's just automatically rendered. And as you can see, we have a button over here. Now that we've learned how to use some basic bootstrap, let's go ahead and apply this by creating a navbar component that we can integrate into our homepage. Thanks to bootstrap, creating a navbar is not difficult. However, if I have a multi-page application and I want a navbar to be on every page, unnecessarily re-rendering a navbar and copy and pasting it into different HTML pages is very space inefficient. It also looks a lot uncleaner and if I have to change the way the navbar looks, it'll cost me a lot more time as I have different HTML pages. What we're going to learn is making a component for our navbar and then taking that and placing it inside of our home page. Now we've already created a navbar or a component. We're going to go ahead and make another component for navbar. Now, in order to make our component, all we're going to do is type in ng generate c navbar. All right, and that what that's going to do is go ahead and generate a brand new component, just like our homepage component. Now let's go over here and go over into HTML. Now we automatically have Bootstrap installed, so all we have to do is just go nav. Slash nav and then go inside of our navbar and go ahead and add in the bootstrap class of navbar navbar light uh, actually let's go dark and our background will be in like a dark theme all right now let's just close that now let's just go ahead and just add in uh, a container Native class is equal to container. All right. And inside of our container, let's just go ahead and just add in a basic link. So, and this will just be, uh, we're just going to redirect this over to uh, nowhere. So just use uh, the, what is this called? Hashtag symbol. And we're going to write over here and just say uh, random link. Okay. Now, if I were to go ahead and take this and, you know, run my application, nothing is going to be seen. The nav bar is simply just a component, but it's never called upon. And we don't want it to be called upon like a route, like how we did with the home page. Instead, we want to insert it into our home page. So head on over back into your home page. Okay. Now let's just go right above where it says homepage works. Over here, we're going to type in app, and then the name of our component, which is navbar, and then go slash app navbar. So let me explain to you what this does. It takes our current app, right, the instance of our app, and then it finds a component called navbar, and it finds the HTML for that page, and takes it, and then displays it over there. Now let's go ahead and see how this looks on a web page. So hit ng serve. And after about one or two minutes, it goes ahead and renders. So let's go ahead and open that up. So as you can see over here, we have our nav bar, which has a random link over here. Now this doesn't look the best, but the main idea was just to explain to you guys how, uh, how the components work inside of Angular. So this is going to be it for this video. If you guys like this video, leave a thumbs up and some questions or comments, and hopefully you'll see me in part two in the future. Have a nice day.